Maybe I should clean the motor. Do not clean the motor. There'd be a pile of parts sitting underneath. It'd be horrifying. What is up, Buck? I am Doug with d in the Garage, and this is a rusty, dusty, crusty four liter. Today, we're gonna talk about how to squeak a little bit more mileage out of these bad boys. Now, for those of you that don't know, the four liter is actually a very old engine. They used it in Jeeps from 1986 to 2006, 20 year run. And the thing that you need to know about the four liter is that it's very old technology. Push rods, all right? Flat tap it lifters, all right? This kind of stuff inside your Jeep requires a different level of maintenance, a different level of attention than your modern vehicles. Specifically, you need, and I've talked about this before, zinc. All right, we're gonna talk more about zinc in a little bit, but the main thing that you can do to make your old world technology four liter happy, simple, it's not even all that expensive, bud. Spork plugs, these little guys right here. The four liter likes old school copper plugs. Your E3s, your Iridiums, you're wasting your money. $2.98, Autolite 985s. Done and done. Here's the catch though. These don't last 50,000 miles. They don't last 30,000 miles. If you're lucky they'll last 20, I change them every 15,000 miles. Why? Because copper is an amazing conductor of electricity and old motors were built with old style copper plugs in mind. Now those iridiums are great, but this engine was not designed to run on them. So leave that crap in your brand new Subaru, your brand new Dodge Challenger. Your old four liter, it wants the coppers. Alrighty, now one of the biggest bummers about the newer four liters is this coil rail. It's kind of a bummer. It makes changing your spark plugs a little more annoying. And also, if one of your coils fail, they all fail. I'm not a fan of it. It was a swing and a miss on Jeep's part. I'm sure it made manufacturing simpler. Um, so what you have to do, if you got a new four liter, you gotta squeak that guy off. But if you're lucky and you got an older four liter, uh, before the WJs, you got a distributor, your traditional uh, cap rotor and wire setup. Now, the thing about this coil rail is there is a plug on the back. It provides the power to the coil rail. I have done plugs before and then my Jeep wouldn't run. And it turns out that that plug in the back was dirty, it was bent, it was broken, it was obstructed. Because it's back there, it gets absolutely no attention. So, when you pull yours out, you wanna inspect that plug. If it looks damaged, if it looks dirty, if it looks corroded, address that before you put the thing back together. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad time. Now, I honestly don't remember how long I've had these plugs in, but this Jeep is about to be a daily again, which it hasn't done since literally before COVID. I think before my daughter was born, anyway. Um, and, uh, you know, trying to live here in Biden's America. And even... Oh, okay. So these plugs weren't all that bad. Uh, you can still see a good way to tell with the copper plugs is if the, um, the edges are still on the electrodes. So you can see this one's only barely starting to round off. Let me see if I can get a good shot for you. This was one of those V-Power ones, NGKs. I am going to go ahead and change them because I don't know how old these are. You can see the ground strap. It looks like at one point it was probably running a little lean. Uh, I may look into that, but uh, some new plugs are gonna do just, just fine. So these old NGKs were good. Uh, NGK ZFR5N, if you are curious. I had no problem with these NGKs. The V-Powers are actually really nice. We're gonna put in these auto lights because they were cheap. And honestly, I've put expensive spark plugs in four liters before. There's no return on investment. It doesn't do better. Put the cheap ones in. Let's gap these real quick. Ooh, buddy buck, I'll tell you what, bud. Life is hard and harder if you're stupid. I can't find my spark plug thing. I can't even find a decent set of fewer gauges. So uh, we're going to go with the rusty, dusty, crusty jams from Grandpa's Toolbox. Let's see. Uh, the old four liters, uh, you want to set them to 35 thou. That's if you have a distributor. If you have this coil rail, the factory set them at 40 thou. I like to go in between 35 and 40. Give it a little room to break in. I find that gives you the best uh, return on investment. Let's see our old ones. Yeah, they were well above 40. Uh, no, they weren't. Yeah, they were right at 40. I don't think these plugs are that old, my bad. There we go, 35 slides, 40, no dice. Pretty darn close. If I had to guess, it's probably set at 38, 38 thou, give or take. So set your uh, plugs up and then you just fire them in. There's nothing to it. If you want, you can put a little copper anti-seize there. You can put a little uh, dielectric grease on the back end there. It depends on your attention to detail, but uh, 
uh, that spark plug's done and you will see an increase in power, a small increase in miles per gallon. I'm not saying this thing's gonna do 40 miles per hour all of a sudden, she can be pushing 400 horsepower, uh, but you will wake her up a little bit. We'll get her back to uh, factory specs, take a couple of the years off that tire old four liter there. All right, bud, we got all our plugs in there. Time to throw this coil rail back on. If you're not a hack like me, you would, you know, hose this thing down, maybe uh, give her a little shit brits of the good stuff, but we don't have time for rational solutions. What I will tell you is remember we mentioned that plug before, that's number one. Number two, there is a body ground right here. I have seen multiple people accidentally delete that body ground when putting this coil rail back on. You know what happens then? It's not good, bud. It's not good. It's about three or four hours of diagnosing all types of nonsense voodoo just to find out your big old Orc hands knocked your ground off. And then another thing that's somewhat tricky, sometimes, for some people. Oh, you see the head of that plug down there? Even though this coil rail looks like it's in the right spot, the head of that plug is not uh, inside one of the boots. So that's another thing you want to make sure of. I have seen people put these together, and it's usually cylinder three or four. There's enough space for the boot to bend out of the way. <laughs> you got a random misfire, you're diagnosing all kinds of ignition, ignition crap just to find out. Nope, you just have zero attention to detail. What we're gonna do now is connect the ignition wire. And we're gonna go start this thing up. Why? Because you wanna make sure you put everything in the right place. I've done a whole bunch of work on these things and then I go to start it up and it's like, well, I did five things. Which one of them was wrong? So you always start up in between. That's how I do anyway. Dude, you can't make this up. <laughs> I think that line screwed up on me. That's literally what'll happen though. Yeah, because I can smell gas. I don't got no I don't got no spark. I hope that's what the problem was. Alright, I think it wasn't seated enough. Seriously, that happens, man. It's very difficult to get that one back there. I don't know why. Just freaking Lyle! Look at that pretty four liter shimmy in there. Maybe I should do uh, motor mounts. Nah, got another 100,000 miles on those motor mounts. Maybe I should do battery terminals. I mean, she started, so clearly the batteries are fine, right? Maybe I should clean the motor. Do not clean the motor. It's held together with dirt, mud, and grease. If you clean it, it'll just be a pile of parts sitting underneath. It'd be horrifying. Alrighty, friends, let's talk about the four liter and oil. Now, the four liter is not picky. Wow, I have got a massive oil leak down here. <laughs> I think that rear main is finally giving up the ghost. Okay, maybe this winter we'll pull this motor, but until then, Oh yeah, my control arm's rotting off too. I need to get under here more often. Okay, what were we saying? Four liters not picky about oil at all. Like even a little bit. But it needs some zinc. Why does it need zinc? What does zinc do? I have a whole other video that goes into extreme detail on what zinc does and why you need it. I'm gonna link that up in the corner, whichever corner it is. I can never tell when I'm on this side of the camera. Short story, short answer is this, zinc offers a sacrificial layer to parts that experience metal on metal wear during engine operation. Wow, that was close. Um, that's going to be specifically in a four liter, your flat tappet lifters, right? More modern engines have roller lifters, not your four liter flat tappets. It creates a situation for an extreme amount of friction, which leads to premature wear. If your flat tappet lifters wear down, you are no longer lifting your um, valves all the way open. That leads to inefficiency. So what do we do? Well, your best bet 
is to start using zinc as soon as possible and use it through the life of the four liter if you can. How do you do that? Well, there's a number of ways. You can get diesel oil, Rotella, most Rotellas anyway. You gotta double check, get the um, manufacturer's safety data sheet. A lot of them are made with zinc because diesel engines, just peeling the protective paint off my uh, control arms there, diesel engines uh, have the same problem. They, uh, they need zinc on the inside. Uh, another way to do it is you can get additives. Um, like the one I showed you at the beginning of the video, Reesloan makes a good one. Let's see who makes that additive right there. Oh, here we're looking at STP. No big deal. STP oil treatment helps protect against engine wear. Contains zinc, anti-wear agent ZDDP. ZDDP is the, um, come here, is the um, compound of zinc, whatever, zinc, da da ba da ba da ba da, -da. Uh, reduces oil burning, eh, I don't know about that. Lubricates moving engine parts, as oil is supposed to. So you can get an additive like this, or you can get some diesel oil, or have you ever wondered what's high mileage about high mileage oils in the store? A lot of times it's just that they have zinc in them. Now why don't all oils have zinc in them? Again, I did a whole video on this, I'll link it, but the short answer is zinc when burned creates soot. Soot kills your catalytic converter. Yes, your Cadillac convertible doesn't like zinc, therefore new engines, as we're all a slave to California Cadillac convertibles and the Green New Deal, uh, we chose to torch our engines in favor of our Cadillac convertibles. No big deal, not a choice I would have made. Nobody consulted me, I wonder why. So what can you do? You can put it back in. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, but understand, you are shortening the length of your Cadillac convertible, AKA uh, catalytic converter. Jesus, I've said it the wrong way so many times. Catalytic converter, all right? But for me, well, let's just say that's not a problem on this Jeep. While we're yapping about oil and four liters and whatnot, I love these Mopar filters. I've never had a problem. I've cut a number of them over open Christmas amateur hour after putting 10,000 miles on them. They're good filters, 090. Fits your four liter and your four seven, 10 out of 10. Sadly, they're getting harder to find. I imagine they're being phased out as the powers that be want us to stop driving 20 year old four liters, go figure. Uh, one beautiful thing about the four liter, not the XJ four liter, WJ four liter. Oil filter, cranked right there on the side of the motor, sticking out so it's easy to get your paws on it. The only problem with it, <laughs> the starter's right below it. Case in point, look at this one. <laughs> That is a crusty little buddy, isn't it? The mud and the blood and the beer in a big way. That thing is ready to give up the ghost. Gotta be, but she doesn't. Why? It's freaking loyal. That's all there is to it. Oh man, I broke my own cardinal rule. How many of you can tell what I did? My cardinal rule. Long time viewers of the channel, anybody? You always remove the oil fill before you empty it. God forbid something goes wrong and I can't get this off. There's no way to fill the motor, no easy way. You can fill it from the bottom, but that's got messy disaster and all over it. Anyway, let's get some additives in here. Whoops, did I just send leaves in there? Hope not, who cares? Oh, that's some honey, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So clearly this is also going to increase the weight of your oil. It's not quite uh, Lucas levels, but it's way thicker than I usually like. I'm not a fan of engine honey. The idea is basically put oil in it that's so damn thick, you're not gonna hear the lifters, you're not gonna hear the rod knock, uh, but also yeah, you, maybe you'll generate some pressure when you're you know, rolling around on eight PSI, but uh, your motor wasn't designed to run on 10W40. Oh well. So get what you can out of there. And then uh, real easy. Pour this into here. The little shake and bake routine. Money! And now just send it. Tell you what, man, this block makes so much noise when you put oil in it. It always sounds like it's leaking out onto the ground, don't it? The thing I've been trying to get at here this whole video is if you want a four liter, to be practical or at least make any sense in 2022, the way that stuff's going, uh, 
you can't treat it like a new engine. It's not the same as your 3.6 Pentastar. It's not. It was built during a time when there was zinc and oil and spark plugs were copper and um, there was no ethanol gas, you know? So you need to put a little extra time in it. No, the four liter is not a classic car motor. You know, it's not a small block Chevy 318 carbureted this out of the third, uh, but it was built during a time when that kind of technology was a little spring cleaning, no big deal, was, um, you know, the, the commonly accepted knowledge, and that was the technology that was available. Who, buddy buck, that's all there is to it. So if you have a question about your four liter, your Grand Cherokee, Cherokee, Wrangler, whatever have you, your four seven, your four two, four two, five two, well, four two as well. Um, go ahead and ask that comment down in the squawk boxes. If I don't know, rare, but sometimes it happens, uh, there will be another Jeeper in the comments who will absolutely share their knowledge with you because that's what this channel is all about. Um, these Jeeps are something special. If you don't know, get your hands on one. An old four liter Cherokee or Grand Cherokee. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, if you've not had the pleasure of driving a Cherokee or Grand Cherokee with a four liter, go ahead and get yourself one. They're really cheap right now because no one wants to put gas in them. They're not efficient, but I just told you they were built with 1970s technology. The fact that you can even make this thing get 25 on the highway is, is generally amazing. So leave that comment down in the squawk boxes. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. You go check out our website. I think that's still up, monkeywithatoolbox.com. I know our videos have been few and far between. Doing the best I can, uh, but I will tell you, I'm hoping to get back to it this winter. I'm gonna have a little bit of time, uh, home, free, hoping to get back into it. Uh, let me know down there in the squawk boxes, what's a video from d &E that you've been wanting to see uh, that you haven't gotten to see because I haven't been making videos. Let me know. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm so happy I'm gonna be daily in this thing again. I'm not gonna love it when I stop at the pump and you gotta kind of hold your breath when you go past the cops because it doesn't have a muffler or cats and it's loud, but uh, it's just no better feeling. I'm telling you, daily a four liter. Maybe it's just me, who knows. Thank you.